the Christian, there we go, I told you it'd turn on in a second there. The Christian is defined by spiritual wealth. The world seeks after worldly wealth and all these different treasures in the world, but we look for spiritual wealth. And we'll talk more about what that means when we get to our sermon, but that's, that's the focus of our worship today. Like I said, we have a, a great service planned for you, so uh, you can follow along in your worship folder or up on the screen. Before we get to that first hymn, we're going to watch a short video that helps us understand this series. If you've seen it before, try to pick out something new. If this is your first time seeing it, uh, just kind of listen as we watch this video. And then after the video, we will sing our first hymn. Thank you. So today I think um, somebody who is a Christian is somebody who has uh, taken Christ as his own personal savior. I would argue that somebody who believes Jesus to be God. It seems to me from what I've seen, whether it be politics or whatever, that it's say one thing, give you an open thing, judging. Friendly, handing out, just really helpful around the community. Honestly, to be completely honest, I think about people that can be very hateful. You gotta love them. You know, you gotta fear you. It's not about that.
Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment, both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you reveal your mighty, powerful, or power chiefly in showing mercy and kindness. Grant us the full measure of your grace that we may obtain your promises 
and become partakers of your heavenly glory. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our first reading this morning that teaches us about worldly wealth and true spiritual wealth comes from 1 Kings chapter 3. The Lord appeared to Solomon in Gibeon in a dream at night. God said, ask for whatever you want me to give you. Solomon said, you have shown great mercy and faithfulness to your servant, my father David just as he walked before you in truth, righteousness, and uprightness of the heart towards you. You have shown this great mercy and faithfulness to him and have given him a son who is seated on his throne to this very day. O Lord my God, now you have made your servant king in the place of my father David, but I am a little child. I do not know how to go out or come in, And I, your servant, am among your people whom you have chosen, a great people who cannot be counted or numbered because they are so many. Now give to your servant a preceptive heart to judge your people, to distinguish between good and evil, for who is able to judge this great people of yours? In the eyes of the Lord, Solomon's request was good. So God said to him, because you have asked for this, And you have not asked for a long life, nor have you asked for riches, nor have you asked for the lives of your enemies, but you have asked for discernment to reach just verdicts. Therefore, I will act according to your words. Yes, I will give you a wise and discerning heart so that there will never have been anyone like you like you before you, nor will anyone like you rise up after you. The word of the Lord. God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. Yes, in the sanctuary I have watched you to see your power and your glory. Yes, I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied with the grace of you. My mouth will praise you with the grace of songs. Whenever I remember you on my bed, throughout the watches of the night, I meditate on you. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Our second reading comes from 1 Timothy chapter 6. Instruct those who are rich in this present age not to be arrogant or to put their hope in the uncertainty of riches, but rather in God, who richly supplies us with all things for our enjoyment. Instruct them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and willing to share. In this way, they are storing up for themselves the treasures of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. O Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to you, turning away from godless, empty talk and the contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. By professing it, Some have veered away from the truth. Grace be with you. Amen. The word of the Lord. Please stand in honor of the gospel. Therefore, because you were raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. 
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 13, this lesson serves as a basis for our sermon. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid again. In his joy, he goes away and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking fine pearls. When he found one very valuable pearl, he went away and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. When the net was filled, they pulled it onto the shore. They sat down and gathered the good fish into containers, but threw the bad ones away. This is how it will be at the end of the world. The angels will go out and separate the wicked from the righteous who are among them. And they will throw the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, Did you understand all these things? They answered him, Yes. Then he said to them, Therefore, every expert in the law who has been trained is a disciple, and the kingdom of heaven is like the owner of a house who brings out his treasures, both new things and old things. The Gospel of the Lord. May be seated, and any children may come forward for a children's sermon. Hey guys, how's it going? Oh, careful there. Look out for those steps. All right, so do you guys remember a few minutes ago I read this lesson from 1 Kings about King Solomon? Do you remember that one, King Solomon? He had this dream that God came to him and said he would give him whatever he asked for. So I'm going to ask you guys, if God came to you and asked you, what do you want most in this world, how would you respond? What do you guys want? What's the number one thing that you'd ask for in this world? What's that? Candy. candy. All right. Just a, a boatload of candy. Get as much candy as I can get. All right. Anybody else? What would you ask for if you could have anything in the world? Pizza. Pizza. All right. Got some hungry kids up here, parents. You better feed them when they when we're done with church here. Well, we could ask for all sorts of things. We could ask for food. We could ask for, for money to buy food. We could ask for having all the friends in the world. We could ask for a new bike, all this different stuff. And yet Solomon asked for something different. Do you remember what he asked for? It was discernment or wisdom. What? I know, what is wisdom? He asked for the ability to be able to, to make good choices when it came to telling people what was good or what was bad. So he, he asked for something that was going to benefit other people, not just himself. And God was pleased with that answer and gave him that wisdom. Now, when we want to ask for something, we might ask for all sorts of things in this world. We think about worldly wealth candy, pizza, bikes, those kinds of things. But God has given us so much more than that. He's given us Jesus to be our Savior. He's given us Jesus who came and lived a perfect life for you and for me and for mom and dad and for everybody out there so that we could have eternal life. That's the wonderful news that we have through Jesus. And so even though sometimes we ask for things that are are silly in comparison to eternity, God still gives us this wonderful gift of salvation, eternal life forever with Jesus because he loves us so much. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for the wonderful gifts you've given us in this world, yet we know that they are nothing in comparison to the ultimate gift, the greatest gift that you have given us in Jesus as our Savior. Help us to always believe in you as our one and only way to heaven. In your name we pray. Amen.
All right, thank you guys. And you guys can go take a seat. And the rest of us will continue with our next hymn, hymn six, 868 by Faith. Uh, this one is a little bit new, so we have a cantor singing for us. Um, you can jump in a little bit later if you want. Um, but note there are some directions here. It goes from one to two, then two to the refrain. And so there's a little bit of a nuance there. So maybe best to, to try to listen to a few verses before we jump in. Thank you. By faith we see the hand of God in the light of creation's grand design. In the lives of those who prove his faithfulness, who walk by faith and not by sight. By faith our fathers wrote the earth with the power Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be yours in abundance from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. 
When I was uh, younger, uh, just growing up in, in grade school still, our family during the summers would go on vacations cross country. And I remember one of those vacations, we were in Arkansas. We were at the, the Crater Diamond Mine in Arkansas, and we spent some time there mining for diamonds. We spent the better part of a day there. I think we actually camped there even too. But I remember with the hot sun beating down on us, going through, getting some dirt, sifting through with the the hot, sweaty work of doing that, the, the boring, tedious work of doing that, I looked around and I recognized that we weren't the only ones doing this. There were many other people there doing the same thing that we were doing. But the very thought of going through this tedious work now makes me not want to do it. Makes me not want to stand there in the hot, sweaty sun and uh, with the beating down on us, going for hours and hours looking at dirt just to find something special. You may never find anything. And, and the truth is we, we didn't find anything. Yet just the thought of maybe finding something is what kept us and everyone else going. What if you did find something? What if you found a, a, a precious gem that you unearthed from the ground? What would the value be? What would you be able to do if you sold it? Just the thought of that was something that kept people going, had all these other people around us uh, attending this, this diamond mine here, looking for precious gems. Many years later now, I, I realized something that we should all probably realize that we, we probably already know, that whether you recognize it or not, we are all looking for treasure. Maybe we're not going to play the, the mega millions and try to get a billion dollars. Maybe we're not sifting through a diamond mine or anything like that. Maybe it's, it's not even worldly wealth that we're seeking, but we are all seeking some kind of treasure. Maybe it's pleasure. Maybe it's a, a good relationship with our family. Maybe it's peace, inner peace, world peace, something like that. We're all seeking something that's very valuable to us, whatever it may be. And often, whatever it is that we treasure, we're thinking that if we get this one thing, that we will be satisfied, that this will be the be-all and end-all. It'll be the greatest thing that I ever have, and I can set aside all my worries because I finally got this treasure, whatever it is. The reality, however, is that once we get that treasure, we're going to want more. Greed is a is a sinful monster that create that is in us and, and, it, and it creates this urgency to want more and more. It's like this, this glob that comes by and fits the container of whatever it's in. Once it's in a, a container that's, that's 12 by 12 and it contains that and you like, well, the container's too small. I got to put it in a, in a bigger container, a 24 by 24. The glob somehow goes out and stretches out to all the container. That's what our, our greed is often like. It's never satisfied. It's always stretching out, always wanting more, always looking for the next best thing. So if we try to satisfy it, we are often never satisfied. So today, as we define the Christian and what it means to follow Christ, we see how Jesus teaches us about true treasure. Not worldly treasure, not the pleasures of this world, nothing like that, but true treasure in heaven. That treasure has everything to do with God's kingdom. That treasure is why Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come. And that is what we look at today as Jesus teaches us some parables about God's kingdom. The parables themselves that Jesus teaches us aren't too hard to understand. We first of all have somebody who finds a treasure in a field. Imagine you are the one who found this treasure. 
you go along, you're on vacation somewhere, or whatever, or you're looking for some land to buy because it's a good investment. And in this land, you find that there are wonderful landscapes. There's hills, there's trees, there's a, a stream going through, and you think, oh, that's a, a wonderful property. But besides that, it's, it's in the middle of nowhere. It's not much worth. But as you walk along that stream, you see something shiny in the stream. You go and you mine it out, and you see that, oh, this, this the rock is pretty heavy. This, this rock is really shiny. This rock might be valuable. And you look in the stream, and you see that there's all sorts of other rocks just like this. And upon further examination, you see that it's gold. You take everything you have, you borrow from relatives, you do everything to buy this property because you know how much it's worth is, is so much more than, than what everyone else realizes. That's what this first parable is all about. A man goes along and he finds treasure in a field and he goes and he buys that field so that he has that treasure, so he can keep that treasure forever. That's what the kingdom of God is like. In a similar way, Jesus tells a, a very similar parable about a pearl. Somebody who, who finds a precious pearl and they sell all that they have to get this wonderful pearl. Jesus tells us that's what the kingdom of heaven is like. He tells, he tells us that discovering these wonderful treasures, this wonderful pearl or uh, whatever it is that we find in the land is worth it. The kingdom is worth it. That's the relationship Jesus is trying to teach us. The kingdom of heaven is like finding this wonderful treasure. The kingdom of heaven is something that comes to us and when it finds us, we're filled with excitement. When we recognize its worth, we do everything to sacrifice for it. We set aside all other things in this world. We, we, we don't worry about the, the worldly wealth that we have. Instead, when this treasure of God's kingdom, of his wonderful, precious word comes to us, we seek to do everything we can to be in it to continue to be a part of that kingdom. At least that's the way we ought to respond. But if we're honest with ourselves, do we really treat God's kingdom like we would this treasure in these parables? Really search your soul and see if you are spending hours upon hours sifting through the gems of God's word to try and understand God's kingdom more. Are you one who goes out and when you find this wonderful treasure that you've unearthed from God's word, do you go and share it with others? Or are you content to just come here on Sunday and sit here and listen and then go home and do nothing? Yeah, I think if we search our souls and look at our own lives, we'll see that we don't treat the treasure of God's kingdom as it ought to be treated. And I'm guilty with you, right there with you. There are plenty of opportunities in our life where we could be searching and unearthing more gems from God's word. And there are certainly more times in our life when we could be portraying that word in our lives to others, sharing this treasure with them. Yet our sinful nature, the sinful world around us, and Satan himself seek to take that treasure and make it look like it's something not very valuable at all. When we look at the pleasures of this world, when we look at all the different things this world has to offer, the fun, the excitement of, of everything else that's in the here and now, we tend to forget about what God's kingdom is like. And we tend to forget that God's kingdom isn't just something that's nebulous, that exists out there, and it's, it's to come when we die. But we forget that his kingdom is right here, right now. Let's live our lives like that. 
What would that look like if we did that? The truth is God's kingdom has come to us. It's like a treasure and the pearl that Jesus describes in the parable, and we ought to treat it as such. Jesus promises us, says, For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. In other words, this treasure, this heavenly treasure is everlasting. It's not like the treasure of this world that you can do nothing with when you die. You can accumulate as much wealth as you want. You can have as much pleasures as you want. You can have whatever treasure it is that you seek here on earth, but none of it matters when you die. What does matter is your relationship with Jesus. What does matter is if you know the treasures, the true treasures of the kingdom of God. And those things don't just start when you die. Those things start now. Imagine if you could wake up every morning and join the prophet Jeremiah by saying, Your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Well, you can. And what if you could wake up every morning and say with the psalmist David, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endures forever. Well, in the kingdom of God, which is here and now, you can. Or what if you could wake up every morning and say with Paul, Nothing in all creation will separate me from the love of God that exists in Christ Jesus my Lord. Well, you can't. And what if you could join in saying what the hymn writer says, Rejoice, my heart, be glad and sing, a cheerful trust maintain. For God, the source of everything, your treasure shall remain. You can sing that hymn. This treasure is yours. This treasure is of the kingdom. And this is something that God has freely given to you despite your lack of wanting it sometimes. Often we let that greed monster grow bigger and bigger for all these pleasures and treasures of this world rather than seeking after the true spiritual wealth that God has given us. And maybe part of it is because it is a free gift. Because there's nothing in you or me or anyone else in this world that has deserved this wonderful gift of God's kingdom coming to us. Yet God gives it to us freely. We did nothing to earn it. We did nothing to deserve it. But Jesus did. Jesus lived that perfect life. Jesus paid the price of his perfect life for your imperfect life so that you could have this eternal, everlasting, wonderful, exciting treasure that not only comes to complete fruition in heaven, but starts right here and now. Jesus did everything possible to give you his kingdom. What a wonderful gift that is. That we didn't do anything for it, yet it's, it's given to us. It's not that we simply go and, and seek this treasure. Yes, we're all looking for treasure. But in, in this regard, when the word comes to us, God's word comes, that treasure finds us. God took us when we were nothing and made us his greatest treasure by having Jesus pay the ransom for us that every person needs in their lives. And why is it so important for people to be given this treasure? Well, because we live in a world where you have to work for everything you have. We live in a world where even when it comes to religion, people say things like, have you accepted Christ into your life? And the onus is on you rather than on God. We live in a world where people take the gems of God's word and and twist them and distort them and, and, and take out pieces of the Bible and make it say what they want it to say rather than what it does say. We live in a world where people think that the way to get to salvation is to hope and do their best and rely on luck for all the rest. They think they can contribute to this wonderful bliss of heaven. 
yet they can't. So Jesus ends with another parable about fishing. He says, therefore, every expert in the law, or sorry, um, wrong part. It says, again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered fish of every kind. That net is dragged along. It, it catches fish. It goes about. Uh, it catches good fish and bad fish for eating. And when the angels then come, we understand that this is about believers and unbelievers. And so while we go about our lives seeking spiritual, true spiritual wealth and treasure in heaven, we understand that there are those who, when this treasure is presented to them, they reject it as if it's nothing at all. And when that happens, God says that in the end, those who reject this wonderful treasure of his word will not be able to be in his kingdom any longer. And so Jesus teaches us a, a valuable truth about the realities of hell, where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth, that all who don't believe in Jesus in the end will not get this wonderful free treasure that has been given to each and every one of us. Because some have rejected it here on earth, they won't get it in heaven, and instead they'll go to the other place. And so Jesus doesn't want us to go after any other treasure besides this. Jesus doesn't want us to spend our, our, our time daydreaming about all the different gifts that we might have. He wants us to be wise like Solomon to go out into this world and, and seek the things that, that God would have us seek. But there's one more piece to this whole puzzle of spiritual wealth that God has given us. And that piece is that when we find this wonderful treasure, we don't just keep it to ourselves. When we unearth these things, if, if you had something... Uh, a very valuable, a treasure old or new that Jesus says, you often want to show people. Think of the, the, the pictures that you have when people come over to your, to your home. Maybe there's some new pictures from a recent trip you took or, or in recent memory, uh, and you want to share those pictures. But sometimes there's favorite pictures that are old pictures from when you're young or little, and you share those too. That's what God's word is like. You enjoy bringing out the old parts of the Bible that you have known all your life, but you also enjoy the new things in the Bible that, that mean so, so much to you that you haven't realized were there before. You unearth all of these gems, and then when you do that, you present it to others. You're like a teacher who presents who brings out his treasure, both new things and old things. That is why Jesus leaves us here on this earth. That is our purpose here on this earth, is to bring out these treasures of love and show that people that they have this wonderful treasure of God's kingdom right in front of them. More valuable than diamonds, more valuable than gold, more valuable than any other pleasure in this world. When I was a kid mining for diamonds, I, I, I thought of all the, daydreamed of all the different things that we could, we could get if we got some diamonds. But now I, I realize that while I was searching for a, a worldly treasure, God had already given me a treasure that, that I couldn't find on my own. And that was his kingdom. The treasure of God's kingdom has found you too. Forget everything else in this world and continue to seek that treasure. Continue to pray that God's kingdom would certainly come and realize that you play a vital role in the advancement of God's kingdom. Wherever you are, whenever you are, contribute to that work of the Lord. Just think about how many people are out there with that treasure just waiting in front of them, yet they don't realize that it's there. And always remember what that meant for you when you first found that treasure. 
or better yet, when that treasure found you. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, may guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Having heard the word of the Lord, we now confess our faith. We use the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and a life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and we continue with the prayer of the church. For the prayer of the church this morning, we also include a special prayer for my wife, Laura, who had ear surgery on Friday and is recovering nicely from it. Uh, so we want to say a prayer of thanks for the wonderful physicians and nurses who helped with that, and of course for our God who is in control of all things. We pray. Almighty God and Father, we thank you for all your mercies, especially the gift of your Son, through whom you have revealed your gracious will. We praise you for the Holy Spirit and his working through the means of grace. And your word in our hearts, Strengthen and defend your church, that by your word and sacraments, faith may grow and love toward all may increase. Keep our children in the grace of their baptisms. Enable their parents to train them in lives of faith. Preserve our nation in justice and honor. Guide and bless all who make, administer, and judge our laws. Let your blessing rest on planting and harvest, commerce and industry, medicine and science, the arts and culture. Protect all who travel and care for those whose work is difficult or dangerous. Be with all who themselves to any useful task. Comfort all who are in sorrow or need, sickness or adversity, especially Laura as she recovers from her surgery. Thank you for sending wonderful physicians who could take care of what was happening in her inner ear. And may she continue to be blessed with a speedy recovery as well. Remember those who suffer persecution for the faith. Have mercy on those for whom death draws near. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. We remember with thanksgiving those who loved and served you, who now rest from their labors. Console those who are mourning or living with sadness. Grant us these things, Father, for the sake of Jesus, who died and rose again. At this time, we'll collect the offering. We please ask that you also use this opportunity to fill out those connection cards located in each of your worship folders. You can do so by using either the paper copy or you can do so digitally as well. Thank you.
We sing our next hymn, Beautiful Savior. Please stand as we close with prayer. Blessed Lord, you have given us your holy scriptures for our learning. May we so hear them, read, learn, and take them to heart, that being strengthened and comforted by your holy word, we may cling to the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. May be seated. We sing our closing hymn.
Good morning once again. Glad to have you with us in worship. Again, a special welcome to our guests. We do hope that you can join us again. Uh, we will have some fellowship downstairs after worship today, but we will not be having a Bible study again. I will be heading shortly to North Liberty to go and preach there. Uh, some news and highlights for you. First of all, thank you to all those who went canvassing with us yesterday. It was a, a little bit warm, but not as warm as it's been, so it was, it was welcome to go then. We still have a few extra uh, door hangers, so if you would like some, please let me know. Um, this canvassing was also done in conjunction with what is coming up on Tuesday for our national night out. We still need some volunteers for some different positions for that. Um, it's, a, it's a fun event here at our Cedar Rapids campus. Um, we're inviting the whole community to come, the, the police people to come. Uh, it's on Tuesday, August 1st, starting at 6 p.m. There are some sign-up sheets. Um, so if you do plan on attending, um, we encourage that. And maybe also consider helping out as well. If you have any questions, you can contact Nick Pamprin or the church office. Nick is our evangelism chairman and has been coordinating this effort with us. Uh, we have a voters meeting and picnic coming up, or, or potluck picnic, however you want to say it, um, coming up on August 6th. That means that we will have our one service in North Liberty. Uh, no service here that day. Uh, the, the meeting starts at 9.30, the service is at 11, and then there's the, the picnic potluck to follow after that. One of the things that we'll be addressing shortly is that we've been working on um, for the last better part of a year, uh, updating our constitution. So we'll talk about some major changes with that, and then we'll, we'll hand out some diagrams that kind of explain it, hand out that constitution um, for it to be voted on at our next meeting in November. So that will give some time to digest it, and then there will be some opportunities to give uh, Q&A at our stewardship fair in September as well. Um, so look forward to that. If you haven't been to North Liberty, you can find the address back here. It says our South Campus, 520 West Cherry Street, North Liberty, Iowa. And so that will be taking place August 6th at starting at 930 there. Um, there's a, a wonderful article in J the July Ford in Christ. Do, do pick that up if you're interested. And then we have um, been blessed with one of our, our guests and one of our members are going to the Synod Convention this year. And so if you have any questions about it, you can ask them too. You guys are going to raise your hand. Those guys are going. They're going to represent us down there. One from our congregation, one from Oskaloosa. Um, and they'll, they're on different committees and stuff, and we'll be uh, there absorbing all of the different information that goes on at convention. Thank you for your willingness to go to that. Appreciate that. Other than that, um, I've had many questions about Laura, and so I just wanted to give a little bit of an update there. Uh, Laura had ear surgery on her left ear for what is called a cholesteatoma. Uh, this is the same surgery that I had three different times on my ear. It's not contagious or anything like that. It's kind of a, a rare thing that we both, husband and wife, have it. Um, but she's doing good from her surgery. Um, they, I, I don't know how much she wants me to tell, and she's probably going to hit me when I get home. There was a little bit of extra stuff that they found when they were in there that might necessitate more surgery too. Um, and so do keep her in your prayers. But right now she is doing very well, much better than I was doing after my surgeries. Um, and so uh, may, may the Lord be praised for that, for putting wonderful physicians in our life and surgeons and for her recovery going very well so far. Um, thank you for your prayers, the meals, um, and, and everything else you've done to support us. We truly appreciate it and, and feel the love. Um, so that's just a brief update for you, for everybody who's been asking. Um, other than that, do join us downstairs for some fellowship. And again, no Bible study. I'll be heading shortly on my way to North Liberty. May God bless your week.